Afternoon everyone, it's Cargo White Cowboy here. Today's video is going to be a three year review of the Surly Big Dummy. And here is my Big Dummy as it's set up. Just do a quick scan of that. Now I've been riding this bike for three years. It's the only bike I now own. So what I'm going to tell you is, as far as a bicycle goes, this is probably one of the best bicycles I have ever owned in my entire life. The platform that they built for this, as far as a long tail cargo bike, is excellent. I love it. Um, if you watch my earlier video from two years ago you can see all the upgrades I've done to it and I haven't really done <clears throat> anything else to upgrade it except maybe those black panels right there that I built because I stopped using the big dummy bags not that there's anything wrong with the big dummy bags they're actually very excellent I have the version one the new big dummy that they're putting out this year has the version two which I do not care for <clears throat> I've not seen them in person, but from the pictures that I've looked at, I do not like them. And I'll go more into that in a, little, in, a, in a minute here. Now this bike, for what it's made for, is very durable. The other day I took my front wheel off and opened up the hub to check the grease in my bearings, and it was still very good. I didn't have to re, you know, take it apart, repack the bearings. Um, in the three years I've had it, I have not had to do any maintenance to it at all, not even adjust my shifters. The only thing I've had to do is tiny adjustments to my brakes as the pads wear down. So for three years and the amount of riding I've done, it's held up really well. Um, the reason that I stopped using the Surly Big Dummy Bags is because if you're going to leave your bike out somewhere and go in a store, you got to take everything out of your bags, <clears throat> at least in the area where I live, because people will steal your shit, like, quickly. So I like the single bag setup I have. You can see another video with that where I'm using Alice Packs. I have four different Alice Packs that I can pack up and, and lash onto my Big Dummy. The black panel is to keep the bag from going in um, towards the rear wheel. I don't want anything caught up on my rear wheel or, or my uh, drivetrain. So I built those black panels. I started out with Coroplast, but was at my local Menards the other day and found this black plastic material. It comes in two thicknesses. I chose the thinner of the two to have, let it have some flex. I don't want it to be too rigid. I like to have a little bit of flexibility into it. And there's enough framework back behind it that it, the panel can't flex into my wheel. There's just no way it's going to happen. Between the frame and the um, metal that holds the rear fender on, there's no way it could flex into the rear wheel. It's just not going to happen. Now, as far as an everyday bike, if you're going to have a bicycle just to go out and ride around on, this is probably not the bike for you. The, the problem, one of the problems with the Big Dummy is if you come up to a tall curb, you cannot lift the front wheel over the curb. At least I can. I have tried to pull that front wheel off the ground and it just, it just does not happen. It is too long. It's like seven feet long. And there's just no way I can get that front wheel up over like a, a tall three or four inch curb. You have to stop and physically lift it up over. That's one thing that I kind of dislike about it. Not a huge deal, not a deal breaker. Now, as far as uh, the kickstand that originally came out, you can see I have the rolling jack jackass kickstand on there, which is $400 by itself. But let me tell you, <clears throat> a cargo bike without a good double stand is just no good. It's hard to load. It's hard to unload. 
because the single kickstand that came not, came on it was just no good. It's it's absolutely garbage. Hated it. It was a worthwhile investment to pay for that rolling jackass. That thing is top of the line. Now, the way I have it currently set up with, with single bags, if you're going to set up single bags, the one thing I would recommend is building a set of wide loaders so that bag has something to rest on. And mine are just built out of half-inch uh, pressure-treated plywood and some black uh, half-inch black pipe. I didn't want to use conduit, like electrical conduit, because I just don't feel it's strong enough. That black pipe, if I bend that, I'm really doing something. Now, they have built a new version of this for this year, because this is the last year for the Surly Big Dummy. And they're going to do one production run, and when they said when they're gone, they're gone. That's it. But the pictures I looked at online, you see that little tube up there that goes from the main tube to the seat tube? That is no longer there on the Big Dummy. And I don't know what the back of the frame looks like on the new Big Dummy because there was no pictures of it. But I'm going to say that this, this is a 2019 and this frame, the way it's made, to me seems much stronger than the new frame they've made. And the new bags that come with it, the version 2 bags, just the way they attach, I do not like. They got like sleeves that go over the tubing instead of the nice heavy duty Velcro straps like on the version 1 bags. The version 1 bags are very strong, very good bags. Just for me, they just, I, I had them for two years and just this year I switched to this new version that I kind of just created myself. I didn't want regular panniers. I decided to go with military bags because they're very sturdy, they're inexpensive, and they got really good volume to them. Now I've taken this bike off-road one time in all the time I've had it. I, there's, I live in a very, um, it's not really rural, but there's not a lot of trails around here for bicycles. Most, most of my riding is on pavement. And that's why I have full coverage fenders. But when I did take it off-road, it did well. The only thing that I found off-road was there was a couple little hills on, on the path I was taking that were very steep with huge roots sticking out of the ground. I mean very steep. So I had to push the bike up it. And that day I had it loaded with two bags. So I had to push it up these two hills over these roots which wasn't that bad it was it was fine but then I further down the path I came across a, a tree had fallen across the path because we had a huge windstorm like a couple days before that and I could not with the bags on there I could not lift the bike up over the tree I got the front end over but then the chain ring the on the front there um, wanted to rest on the log and I didn't feel good about that so I got it back and took the bags off put them on the other side of the log then was able to lift the bike up over the log so as far as like running trails with it if it's just flat gravel paths with not a lot of obstacles and, and big roots probably be fine um, they recommend in the instruction manual that you don't do a drop bigger than six inches with it as you could damage the frame and I think I think what they're talking about as far as damaging the frame would be right here in this area where all of those welds come together I think if you dropped it too big a drop and came down wrong on it you would probably break those welds that's a very that's one point where it's welded in like four different places because you got each side then you got the, the down tube and then you got the, the bottom tube here they're all welded and that that's a point where I think it could break it might break but overall if you want a bike for like replacing your car running around to the grocery store you know going to the laundromat um, 
you know, just hauling stuff. Um, I think it'd be good for touring. Only problem for touring is you might bring too much stuff um, and have too much weight, but that's just something that you have to figure out for yourself. The um, I like the ability to put a front rack and a basket on it. That is just so handy to have a basket on the front just to throw stuff in. I can't tell you how, how much I love that. The front rack that's on it I do not like. It's a, it was actually a rear rack that I fabbed to make it fit the front until I get the Surly front rack for it, which I'm going to do eventually. I, I said that two years ago on my video and still haven't done it. But one, one day I will eventually order it and put it on there because that will give me the ability to not only have a basket on top, but that rack right there is aluminum. The Surly one is chromoly steel. Plus, I'd be able to put uh, two bags on the front if I needed to. As far as the new Big Dummy, another thing I saw that I did not like was the chain ring. They put a single chain ring and it's only nine speeds. So you got a single chain ring on the front and nine on your cassette. So you only got nine, nine speeds to choose from, nine different gear ratios. With this, you got the triple on the front, you got a 10 speed cassette on the back, so you got 30. And I gotta tell you, when you're, when you're loaded up, you want that triple chain ring on the front. Uh, the most I've ever carried on this bike was 395 pounds. I had myself. I had my girlfriend on it, I had the Surly bags on it, and I had some stuff in there. It was about 395 pounds. I pedaled 25 miles with her on it and then up a very steep incline of a bridge, a walking bridge here in, in Indiana at the end of that 25 miles. And without that triple chain ring on the front, I would not have made it up, up that steep incline after riding 25 miles. And, and the odd thing about this bike is like when you got to load it up and you're rolling it out to get on it when it's all loaded it feels so awkward so heavy you're like oh my god this thing's so heavy but then you get on it and you start pedaling and it feels like there's nothing there it's it's such a smooth riding bicycle i mean it's just it's so smooth it's, it's not even funny you don't even notice the weight i mean you do notice it but when you're riding versus pushing it, you, you don't really even notice the, the weight on there. It's it's just a great platform to have it loaded up with gear. And like the the big easy, the version of it that's the electric bike, I imagine that's real nice too. I don't think it has 30 gears. I think it has a single chain ring on the front, and maybe nine or ten gears. But I believe that sooner or later, with everybody buying e-bikes, I believe that the government will put regulations on, on them. Some states already do have regulations on them, but I believe they'll put regulations like, since it has a motor, you're going to have to register it, you're going to have to insure it, and all kinds of stupid crap to get money out of your pocket. Because Surly just made a new bike too called the Skid Loader, that's an e-bike. Looks like a cool bike. Um, there's a guy I follow on Instagram. He has one. He loves it. Um, the big fat dummy version of this they have with the big four or five inch tires on it is no longer made. But if you're going to buy one of these, I would say try to find one where the frame is this frame. I mean, the new frame is still chromoly steel, but I just don't, I don't care for the way they built it. You know, I'd go back to 2019, 2020, whenever they made the frame exactly like the one you're seeing in this video, and I would get one of those and just build it up for what you want it to be. If you're going to use it for off-road use, like on a lot of trails, it's still a good platform for that. You just have to watch that, you know, you don't do a big drop and, you know, mess up the frame. The good thing about the frame being chromoly steel, though, is you could get it re-welded. Anybody that's good at welding can weld steel. So that's that's a plus point to it. Aluminum, not so much. You know, there are people that can weld aluminum that are real good at it, but if you were to take this bike on tour and say you're down in Mexico and you 
you snap something on the frame, almost anywhere in the world people can weld steel. You know, so that's that's a good point to a steel bike versus an aluminum bike, and especially, you know, carbon fiber. I, I wouldn't have a carbon fiber bike if you gave it to me. I'm just not a fan. But overall, this is still a great bike. I don't think I would ever go back to a mountain bike with racks and, and, and uh, like a front rack, a rear rack, and some, some panniers on it. The only thing that that would give me the ability to do is when I'm not, you know, touring or going camping or whatever, is I would be able to go out and play a little bit more, like ride wheelies and hop curbs and bunny hop and stuff. But in all reality, I, I don't really miss doing any of that. I just like riding. I ride very slow. But this thing is is a tank, man. It really is. And it's so versatile. The uses for it are just endless. There's another guy that I used to see when I was on Facebook. He lives over in Europe somewhere. He uses a big, uh, Surly Big Dummy for... Uh, he's a mobile bike mechanic. He has a whole his whole kit on the back to, for his bike shop. And uh, he just goes to people's homes and fix their bikes at their home with the Surly Big Dummy. So it's got a lot of practical uses. So if you're thinking about, you know, building up a cargo bike, I'm sure there's plenty of Surly Big Dummies out there somewhere for sale. And you could probably find one and build it up to whatever you need it to be. So that's my review. Still overall a great bicycle. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Please like my videos. Please share my videos. And please subscribe to my channel. Got some good stuff coming up this summer. So this is Cargo Bike Cowboy, and I'm signing out. Y'all have a great day.